Good morning. My name is Heather Cox, and this morning I'm going to talk to you about how to discontinue a uh, urinary retention catheter. I'm going to go ahead and enter the patient's room, so I would knock and foam in as I entered. Good morning, Miss Smith. My name is Heather. I'm going to be your nurse. I'm going to go ahead and pull the curtain and provide for privacy. My name is Heather, and I'm coming in so I can discontinue the catheter. Um, the doctor has said that it's time for it to come out um, because you had it in for your urinary retention after your surgery, and it's been a couple of days, and so it sounds like it's ready for it to come out. So as I entered, I acknowledged the patient. I introduced myself. I went ahead and explained the procedure. I'm going to tell her it's probably going to take about five to ten minutes to take this out. Um, you always want to ask if your patient has any allergies, and then I'm going to identify the patient. Can you please tell me your name and date of birth? And I'm doing that while I'm looking at her armband, and she confirms that. Again, before I entered the room, I would want to make sure that I verified the doctor's order um, and that this fit the patient's situation, that, you know, it was good for the catheter to come out and there were no contraindications or any issues with any of this stuff. So I've confirmed all of those things. I'm going to come in and I've brought some equipment with me. So the first thing I probably need to do is I need to go ahead and put on some gloves. And after I put on the gloves here, then I'm going to go ahead and empty the catheter because you never want to discontinue a catheter with a full bag. So I brought a urinal or whatever the receptacle is to empty the urine and you come down and you know how to do this from CNA school. I would actually come down here and make sure that I don't touch the floor with it and empty the urine. And once I've got the urine in the receptacle, I would need to explain to her that I would need to go and dispose of it. So if they've got a bathroom in there, then you can go and pour it out there wherever you need to. We'll say that I've left the room and explained to her that and I've went and emptied the urinal and I've gotten rid of that and I'm gonna take off my gloves and I'm gonna go ahead and foam and re-enter the room. And now that I've emptied the receptacle, I'm gonna go ahead and I've got to have some other equipment here with me. So if you'll look over here at the table, I'll talk to you about a few things. Most of your agencies require that you do catheter care um, within a certain time frame and how often you have to empty the catheters and all those things. So make sure you refer back to your facility policy. Some of the facilities require that you clean with this TheraWorks um, and you're going to have the foam and then you would clean, you know, every 8 to 12 hours. And certainly before I discontinue the Foley, I need to clean with that before I do that. So I would go ahead and put on some gloves and I would go ahead and clean as I normally would, you know, to make sure that's done. Once I've done the cleaning and the perineal care, then I would come on over here and some of the other equipment you're going to need is a needless syringe, whatever size that fits with the catheter that you put in. Now with Miss Smith earlier, I know that she's got a 16 French catheter that was inflated with a 10 milliliter um, syringe. If you did not know what it was, then you need to go and look at the balloon port. And we're going to confirm that whenever we get ready to discontinue this. And I've also got some alcohol here because I need to take off the securement device. So now that I'm back in the room, I'm going to go ahead and put back on a clean pair of gloves. And I'm going to go ahead and do that at this point. I'm going to raise her bed up to my height to where I can actually reach her. Okay, and now she's up high enough for me to reach her. I'm going to go ahead and uncover enough so that I can get to her actual catheter. The securement device would be here, and it would be um, taped here on her leg. And so if you look at it, it actually says that you remove it with alcohol. And that's one reason that I brought the alcohol prep pads in here. What I would need to do is open these up, and you go ahead and take out the little alcohol pads. And you're actually going to saturate the edges here with the alcohol on both sides. And once you get them saturated, then this will actually come off a little bit easier. I'm going to go ahead and take this out. And if you look at it, you push on the side and the actual catheter will come on out here. And then you want to make sure that it's not pulling on your patient. And then as I've loosened this up, I can actually go ahead and peel this and it will actually come off my patient's legs and I can get rid of it in the trash can or appropriate receptacle, depending on facility policy. Now that that is removed, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to look and just confirm with the balloon port that this is in fact a 16 French Foley and it says inflate with 10 milliliters. And I knew I had already put it in earlier, but if you did not, you could check back in your patient's charting or you could come and always check the balloon port. Now, that being said, 
Sometimes things get inflated with more or less than they're supposed to. And so whenever you do deflate, you're going to want to make sure that you completely pull all the liquid out and don't depend on that there will only be 10 milliliters in here because that's what should be in there, but it may or may not be. This is not a sterile procedure, so I'm going to come and take this out. And this will actually twist right here onto the actual balloon port. And you notice I didn't do anything to it. I let it go ahead and by gravity go ahead and deflate. And that's really the best way to do this because this is allowing the balloon to deflate on its own. And if you'll notice, it's actually filling back up. Now once it does this, then what you're going to want to do is go ahead and tug back on it a little bit more. What you could actually do is take this off and squirt the water out and put it back on again and then pull again and make sure you've got everything out because you never want to pull the catheter out before the balloon is deflated. If you do that, you can cause a lot of urethral trauma, so you never want to do that. Now, now this has been deflated, then what I can do, make sure that I've still got a waterproof pad underneath my patient because I don't want to have leakage of urine onto my patient whenever I'm done. I'm going to explain to her that this may burn and sting just a little bit and it's going to feel a little uncomfortable. I would need to have a red bag or whatever the um, way I need to dispose of the catheter available. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to slowly remove the catheter. And whenever I pull it out, you're probably going to have a little bit of leakage of urine. Thus, I need to make sure I've got the gloves on and the pad underneath the patient. Anytime you pull any equipment out of the patient, you always need to make sure that the tip is intact. And when you do your documentation, you need to make sure that you include that in there as well because it could be that part of the catheter has been left in the patient. Now that I've got this out, I would wrap this up in my hand. I would actually take the catheter bag that I've already drained and I would put all of this in the red bag or whatever the appropriate receptacle is to dispose of it. Now that I'm finished with that, my gloves are now dirty, so I would take these off and I would foam. And then I would put on some more gloves and I would provide perineal care again at the end of the procedure because I've pulled this catheter out and I need to make sure that I clean her up again and then get the waterproof pad out from underneath her. I'm now going to cover her up and I would need to do some teaching with Mrs. Smith at this point. I would need to explain to her that she may have some irritation after removal of the catheter. Um, I need to make sure that she understands that I need to know when she voids again because you're worried about urinary retention after removal of a Foley catheter. So I need to make sure that she knows that uh, there's either a hat in the bathroom to obtain, you know, the urine that she would have so that I can actually see the appearance and notice if there's any odor or blood in it and also see the amount and make sure she doesn't have any issues. You would want to make sure that your patient has at least urinated within the first eight hours because if she hasn't, you may be having some problems with retention. And as we talked about in one of the other videos, some ways that you can actually assess for urinary retention. I'm going to uncover you for a minute, Mrs. Smith. You could come down and you can actually uncover your patient's lower abdomen area. And right here above the symphysis pubis, if you can palpate the bladder, that is an abnormal finding. So if you can palpate it, then chances are she's probably got some urinary retention. Of course, I'd have gloves on at this point. Um, the other thing you could do is you could perform a bladder scan on her and you could see how much urine is in there. So anytime you think your patient is having urinary retention, you can always do a bladder scan on your patient. You would want to make sure and keep up with the um, color, odor, consistency, and amount of the urine she has out. And usually you're going to want to encourage her to drink fluids to encourage her to urinate unless you have restrictions. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and foam again. And I've done the teaching with her and explained to her everything that's going on. I'm going to go ahead and lower her bed again. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure safety-wise that her bed is low and it's locked and it's not moving. She's got her call bell within reach. I'm going to ask her if she's having any pain. I'm going to ask her if she needs to potty or go to the bathroom. I'm making sure she's in a comfortable position, and then I would put her table and all of her belongings back over here in proximity so that she could reach them. Um, again, I would thank her for allowing me to care for her, and then I would clean up my equipment, and I would exit the room. Thank you very much.